Good morning and welcome to the 21st annual exhibit of hydrogen and fuel cells. We've been talking all week uh, about the new developments in the technologies, particularly mobility is on everyone's lips. And on that notion, we need infrastructure, of course. So I'll be talking to Dr. Antoine Mazas, who's Managing Director at Air Liquide Advanced Technologies about national and international developments in H2 mobility. Please welcome with me, Dr. Antoine Mazas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we're always happy to have big players here because small companies can't do everything. It's just a budget question. So Air Liquide, it is a large company, isn't it? So Air Liquide is, of course, a large company, international one, or um, I would say very experienced company created uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, mm -hmm. 1902. So already an old lady mm -hmm. with a bright future. <laughs> and that's what it is interesting today. Mm -hmm. um, Air Liquide, world leader for industry gases, mm -hmm. for the industry of course, and also for healthcare, mm -hmm. which is an important part of our activity. Mm -hmm. In the field of hydrogen, because this is the topic we are talking about today, mm -hmm. we have more than 40 years of experience of industrial hydrogen mm -hmm. for a lot of different industry sectors serving very various customers, very large customers, to very specific niche markets, mm -hmm. with um, flow rates delivered to the customers, which are very different, depending on the industry applications. Mm -hmm. And we are working on the entire hydrogen value chain, mm -hmm. from the production of the molecule up to the industrial application. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. hydrogen with air liquide, this is already a long story. Mm -hmm. And this is a story that we would like to go on developing, of course, mm -hmm. especially in the field of mobility, especially in the field of hydrogen as an energy carrier. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, mobility is already something we can say we're on the road. Um, uh, we have um, buses, uh, we have uh, in logistics forklift troughs. They're already a success story. Um, but it seems to me the issue behind mobility is an egg scenario where we need an infrastructure to get the vehicles um, uh, marketed en masse and uh, who's going to do the infrastructure um, if there is only one customer. We had a, a stationing expert on the stage a while ago. He said, you know, we the station and um, obviously they're just a loss because you're refueling um, 10 cars a day. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> so, so how do we deal with that? So if we talk about mobility uses of hydrogen, mm -hmm. because this is the, the topic we would like to especially deal with today, mm -hmm. you have basically two different approaches. You have a first approach where you have from the beginning the possibility of having a captive fleet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. meaning that you can develop, per se, a business case, which is a standalone business case, where you have a captive, captive fleet, mm -hmm. and where you can build the appropriate infrastructure to serve this captive fleet. Mm -hmm. So I can take a very simple example. Mm -hmm. These are forklifts. Mm -hmm. um, we are working since a couple of years for serving the forklift market. This is a starting market, which is taking off. In North America, we can mention, and probably this is known by some of you, that there are several thousands of forklifts already in application, so hydrogen forklifts, mm -hmm. where the electric battery was replaced by a fuel cell. So these are electric forklifts mm -hmm. run with hydrogen mm -hmm. powered by a fuel cell. So. Mm -hmm more or less 6,000 units in operation in, in North America in very large uh, warehouse, logistic warehouse, production facilities, 
and where you have a dedicated infrastructure for delivering the hydrogen to those forklifts. Mm -hmm. um, three years ago, we have created, we are liquid, a joint venture with Plug Power. Plug Power is the world leader in manufacturing the fuel cells for the forklift mm -hmm. in order to introduce this technology in Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are working on now. Mm -hmm. And we have already a couple of success that I can introduce you. Mm -hmm. Um, we started a um, logistic platform in France two years ago, an air liquid one, as a pioneer, mm -hmm. which is today working extremely efficiently. Um, a bit more than one year ago, we started also a demonstration project with IKEA, mm -hmm. south of France, which is also a successful project. And a couple of weeks ago, again in France, we have signed uh, with a large logistic company to equip, to equip, probably in the future, an entire uh, logistics center. Mm -hmm. And this would be the first of a kind in Europe mm -hmm. if we deploy uh, more than 80 forklifts mm -hmm. for serving this logistics lo warehouse. Mm -hmm. So in this kind of approach, you can have a captive fleet of forklifts, you have a dedicated distribution infrastructure, which mm -hmm. is basically a station mm -hmm. where the forklifts are refueled, mm -hmm. And here, from the start, you can anticipate the whole business case yeah, yeah. where you deliver the hydrogen or you produce on site with an electrolyzer, for instance. Mm -hmm. You fuel the forklifts, and this is kind of an hydrogen island, mm -hmm. which is a standalone business case. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the first business case we have. Mm -hmm. Second business case, you mentioned it, these are the large scale developments. And of course, this is a completely different story yeah, yeah. because here, what is at stake is introducing um, at a large scale fuel cell electric vehicles for the mass market. Mm -hmm. And here, from day one, you cannot say to the, all of us as customers, mm -hmm. please take a fuel cell electric car mm -hmm. and this is the future. And like this, we'll achieve uh, reaching 100% as utilization rate for the station from day one. Of course, you cannot do that. So, you have this chicken and egg dilemma. Uh, what should come first? Infrastructure or cars? Of course, if you want people, if uh, we want to buy uh, hydrogen cars, we need to have an infrastructure available. This is well known. So. What is at stake for the industry is to build the first skeleton of the infrastructure in a couple of pioneering countries to demonstrate the business case and to allow the final customers mm -hmm. to go to the car seller and basically mm -hmm. to, to, to buy this kind of electric vehicles. So the approach, so if we take Germany as example, because Germany is one of the pioneering countries in Europe from this perspective, if you take the case of Germany, we have developed with a couple of industry partners what we think it is an original approach for tackling this chicken and egg dilemma. Mm -hmm. We have uh, created a partnership which is gath gathering six large industry partners, so Air Liquid, Daimler, mm -hmm. Linde, Total, Shell and OMV. Mm -hmm. So two industry gas companies, mm -hmm. three oil retail companies, and one car OEM, especially interested in introducing uh, fuel cell electric cars in the market in the next years. And this partnership will together invest in what will be the first and probably the unique hydrogen distribution infrastructure in Germany. Mm -hmm. So the principle is uh, very simple. We create a joint venture for which all partners bring uh, equity. Mm -hmm. And with the support of public funding coming from the German government or from the European Commission, depending on various programs, this joint venture is in charge of investing, building and operating the first stations mm -hmm. to be built and to create the first skeleton of infrastructure for an entire country. Mm -hmm. So a key figures uh, about this, it means practically to build up to 100 stations in the next four years, mm -hmm. unconditionally of the number of cars to be deployed. Meaning that this will be 
um, the first infrastructure, which will be fueling the first cars coming in the market, whatever the number of cars. So this is the first, first point, very important. Uh, second point, depending on a number of different milestones, of course, with some phases, we plan to build uh, up to 400 stations in the next 10 years. And with these 400 stations, you have really a perfect coverage of the entire territory. And you can enable people to really use their fuel cell car as it was a normal car in terms of having at their disposal the refueling infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This is important. Mm -hmm. Cumulated investments, more than 350 million euros, mm -hmm. which are planned in the, in the next years. What is interesting in this joint approach is this is, we believe this is the appropriate way to go through these years where you, the business case is not profitable by itself. Mm. Okay? This is the, the story. When you have the rollout of the cars, you have a progressive increase of the utilization rate of the station. And you have, of course, to reach a significant utilization rate, rate of those stations to have a profitable business case. Mm -hmm. So you, you start from 0.1% up to 80, 90, 100%. But in order to reach this graal, mm -hmm. you need to pass those years. Mm -hmm. And this is possible only if you have this kind of collaborative approach, because the first mover disadvantage is so high that no industry partner would go alone. Okay, mm -hmm. So this is an example of what the industry is currently implementing mm -hmm. in Germany as a pioneering country mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, but we have other examples uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't uh, want to leave out the motivation behind all of this. Um, you are also involved in a clean energy partnership. Right now, we're facing, uh, for example, in Berlin, uh, days during the week in the summer, particularly where the uh, Feinstaub alarm, as the Germans call it, that is the small particle uh, from diesel motors, is um, so high that according to European legislation, diesel vehicles should not be driven within the city. That is, there is a huge motivating factor here for buses already, for delivery vehicles in some cities, that's a big issue because the diesel-driven vehicles are just, there's too much pollution. So, um, uh, aside from the logistics of how to make it financially viable, we have an environmental drive. Could you tell us a little bit about the clean energy project and what that involves? So, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, first point, you're right. The environmental concerns is one of the drivers, of course, of um, pushing the fuel cell electric vehicles. So, fuel cell electric vehicles advantages are well known, mm -hmm. um, especially compared to the battery ones. Long drive autonomy, yeah, yeah. up to 600 kilometers for the most recent models, and this will probably increase in the future. Mm -hmm. And fueling time, three to five minutes, mm -hmm. so absolutely comparable with what we know today with conventional uh, ICE cars. Mm -hmm. We as Air Liquide do believe that the future of uh, the car industry goes through the electrification. Mm -hmm. And this is not only us, but the entire car industry mm -hmm. who is absolutely convinced that the future of the car industry goes through the electrification of part of the offer for the final customer. So this will take time. Mm -hmm. This will not be from one day to another. This is very clear. Mm -hmm. But this is absolutely a fundamental trend of this industry. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed uh, up to now, we need time mm -hmm. to progressively increase the share of the, of the car fleet, mm -hmm. which are electric cars. Mm -hmm. That's why we need in advance to prepare for the distribution infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But this is a massive trend, and this is coming. This is absolutely certain. Mm -hmm. Coming to your second question, mm -hmm. the good news is that we have demonstrated that this is working. Mm -hmm. So this is not only coming, but this is also working, it's there, yeah. which is, of course, mm -hmm. a good news. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have done with uh, 18 partners here in Germany within this clean energy partnership, mm -hmm. which is a demonstration project to prove the technology to prove the technology of the stations, to prove the technology of the fuel cell electric cars, mm -hmm. 
the clean, the clean Energy Partnership was created in 2006, so already almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And since 10 years, we have been building stations, we have been driving cars quite extensively. Uh, for those of you who have never um, driven such a car, there are some demonstrations which are planned, so maybe you can give us a bit more uh, information about this over there. That's very interesting, and this is an experience I strongly advise you to do in the course of this week, because this is the only way to develop um, his own or her, her own feeling about what is what it is about driving a, a fuel cell electric car. Mm -hmm. So, within the Clean Energy Partnership, we have demonstrated the technology, we have driven the cars, we have run the stations, all this is working. Of course, we are continuously improving the technology from one, uh, on, the, on, the, on one side and on the other side. Mm -hmm. But, in total, mm -hmm. I would say the industry is ready to in introduce these technologies and to, and to change the scale from demonstration to market introduction. And this is the clear message I would like to pass today. Mm -hmm. okay. I should mention that we do have time for a question or two from the audience if there are any questions about uh, uh, technologies. Yeah. Hello, I just um, have one question regarding what you just said about electrification. Can you go into more details? Because we were talking about fuel cells car, and uh, then you talk about electrification. Ah, yeah. So Sorry. You talk uh, maybe about I, I should have uh, explained <laughs> this a bit longer. A fuel cell car is an electric car. And that's very important to have this in mind. The fuel cell car, this is uh, an electric car where the electricity is produced on board. So you have hydrogen combined with the oxygen from the air combined in the fuel cell, and the fuel cell is producing electricity. The electricity itself uh, is fed to a conventional electric motor drive, and the fuel cell also produces only water vapor um, as, I would say, an exhaust gas. Okay, So fuel cell electric cars, mm -hmm. this is all combined. And we are talking about electric cars. Huh? Mm. You, you, you can hold the glass up to the exhaust pipe and yeah. <laughs> drink what up, comes up. out. Yeah, there is a, a nice uh, video of Daimler on this uh, mm. in, the, in Arizona with a Diane Kruger. You can yeah. look yeah. at this on YouTube if. Uh, so we almost hesitate to say it, but the technology is damn sexy. It's, 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 it really is marketable, very elegant. The cars around the back also, um, you should try. We have like a 30-second outlook question. It's very unfair to ask these questions, but um, we know where we are. We know that we have uh, serial production starting. We do know that, oh, there's, all oh, right, well, it's going to be a question from the audience then. <laughs> Oh, sorry, it was just a wave to his colleague here. Oh. Right, back to the last 30-second outlook. <laughs> that was my sports for today. Um, uh, in 30 seconds, where are we going to be 10 years from now? What, what, what do you anticipate in the development? So, in ten, 10 years from now, if you take Germany, you have a country which has more than 400 stations. You have a significant number of hydrogen vehicles, probably a couple hundreds, thousands of them. Mm -hmm. You have a business case which is built, and you have, hopefully, external investors who are willing to invest more and more in the development of this technology. Mm -hmm. If you look at the rest of the world, you have an infrastructure in the US. We are active on the West Coast, on the East Coast. We are especially collaborating with Toyota. Mm -hmm. You have an infrastructure in Denmark, you have an infrastructure in France, you have an infrastructure in the UK, in most of the European countries. Mm -hmm. You have an infrastructure in Japan, and maybe in China too, because I think, this is my personal conviction, yeah, yeah, yeah. China will be also at the forefront of a lot of environment developments in the next years. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll stay in touch. Uh, I hope that we'll see you next year at the stand. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Antoine Mazas, who's Managing Director at Air Liquide Advanced Technologies. Um, uh, wonderful conversation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, of course. We'll be continuing shortly with our next interview on stage. Um, so have a seat. The drinks are on the house, and um, uh, the conversation is entertaining and free. Thank you. <laughs>